two, one. Welcome back, everybody, to the Weapons of Mass Discussion podcast. Glenn Snyder here with Dr. Corbett Everidge, Ministry of Defense, LLC. Um, we had a little uh, conversation before recording today trying to figure out, I will call it a, a conversation, not a debate, uh, a couple different topics of discussion. It was a debate. No, nah, no, nah, we, we wouldn't debate. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we were trying to figure out, you know, again, every week we try to do something relevant, you kind of what's going on around us. Um, so one of the things we kind of talked about today, it, the direction we're going to go today, is talk about where we are now as a society, the things that are going around us, but what is the possibility of where things could go? And when you have when you have this conversation, and you start talking about the way things can happen, first thing people do, oh, you're you're a conspiracy theorist, you know, people think you're you're, you know, you're just you're looking at negative things, you're you're thinking of crazy stuff that's going to happen. Well, you've been talking about this stuff for years. He ain't too crazy now. I remember ten years ago, people saying, hey, "Court, he he he's out there a little bit." No, no, you hit the nail on the head. He's yeah. right on target because it doesn't take a you know. All you have to do is follow history. See how? Oh no! See how things have happened the hell you other say. places to other people, other societies, and there are signs. There are, there are markers. There are things that that would tell you real quick where you're heading. And you don't want to know where I think we're going to be in five years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, if you haven't watched the news lately, before we right before we jump in, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him kind of go down his path and uh, let him because he was going to drive this conversation tonight uh, since it was his choice. Mine will be next week. <laughs> you know, have you ever got it felt like you're swimming the other way with a toilet bowl? You know, it, it swirls this way and you're swimming that way. That's me. And I'm hitting the switch. <laughs> but uh, before we go into that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video real quick. And uh, essentially what it is, if, you, if you've missed the news lately um, and, and don't really get the gist of what we're talking about with some of the unrest and some of the, just the chaotic mess, um, take a look at this. <laughs> First thing, pop quiz, ladies and gentlemen. You know what the definition of a conspiracy theorist is? What is it? It's somebody who no longer believes the lies of known and proven liars. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Exactly. 
Now, this is not about conspiracy theorists, but uh, let me get this. Just let's just set the table for this. Under federal criminal law, mm -hmm. one of the worst crimes you can be convicted of is conspiracy. Right. Now, that's actually, in some cases, worse than the actual crime itself. So if me and you conspire to be stupid and no stupid zone, mm. under federal law, and that's probably a crime, for God's sakes, I don't <laughs> Somewhere know. Somewhere it is. Hellfire. Well, I don't know. Watching the news lately, I don't think there's no such thing as a no, stupid zone no, anymore. Now, now, this is actually, this is factual. They say that the average person in the United States breaks five federal laws a day. Wow. So... For all of you said you've never broken a law, you're wrong. Hmm. But actually, in some cases, the penalty of conspiracy is worse than the crime itself. So, conspiracy to commit murder, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Conspiracy to, you know, traffic in Viagra, whatever it is, right? You know, you know, serial erections. <laughs> uh, who knows? But in some cases, under federal law, those actually will carry stiffer penalties, no pun intended, than a, <laughs> uh, I told you it's going to be interesting. <laughs> than the actual crime itself. Right. All right. Let's look then at our world today, and th and what got me thinking about this was actually a text message me, you, and Lee was sitting around. You know, during the week we get into some interesting conversations mm -hmm. on text message. Yeah. Not at three o'clock. That's when I'm up. That, yeah, the, those are the. That's when his theories come out at three in the morning. Yeah. And I just answer the next day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we were talking something loosely about you know. The world as it stands. Right. If you can even say that anymore. And two things popped into my mind. I'll go into one that actually impacted me as a young soldier in the army. In this wonderful, beautiful place called Serbia and Bosnia. Mm hmm. And folks were there. Yeah. We're there. Uh, we just haven't started shooting each other on a mass scale yet like they did. And, right. you know, I'm going to say something probably very unpopular, but we supported the wrong side in it. Hmm. We have a tendency to do that with our foreign policy. If we had, you know, if, you know, if, you know, Bill Clinton had been getting his jollies in the White House and, and ruining a woman's dress, yeah, we probably wouldn't have... 90% of the problems we're having with the Muslim world right now. Right. Uh, that's just the way that is. We, we number one, had no business getting in it. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of a common theme. Yes. You know, yeah. I took a class with, you know, Ed Calderon. God, I'm giving some free plugs today. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, What's up with this? A couple of years ago. And he made a very, very astute comment. He said, you know, around the world that people come to Americans, you know, when you're looking at training. Mm hmm come to us for firearms and uh and medical training like combat medicine and he made a very valid point he says he said it's because y'all are going around the world picking fights with people mm -hmm. he's right yeah he's right i mean you know tell me a war in the last hundred years you know well since world war ii and you there you can make a case that we actually did start that one if you choose to read history that we have not started Right. I'll wait. Yeah. So, but let's look, and I want to give you a scenario. Now, here's where it, I want you to follow me along and, and put on your creative thinking caps. Story time. For those of you who are old enough to remember when the Berlin Wall came down, mm -hmm. it's basically how we defeated and conquered the free world and communism. Yeah. Yeah. Hoorah! Yeah. yeah. Or Lee or me, right? <laughs> Imagine you come home, uh, and this actually happened in Russia quite often. You come home from work, you know, so you're going to work and working, you know, for a worthless currency. You know, so you might have been, say, making what? What's the average person making in the United States a day? <clears throat> uh, two or three hundred bucks? Two or three hundred bucks. Okay, yeah. let's just say three hundred bucks. You okay. got a good paying job. And inflation, that's now down to thirty dollars. But, you know, you're doing your civic duty you get up and go to work every day and you come home and open the door and it's before your wife and your kids get home and there's two guys sitting in, on your sofa in their underwear watching tv mm. uh, drinking vodka and smoking cigars what the hell are you doing in my house uh no 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 because the government as we knew it 
has fallen apart and our society is crumbling before our eyes. Mm -hmm. This is our house. It's anarchy. Well, no, 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 no. I've got a driver's license. I've got a, I've got a deed. <laughs> I've got a tax statement. Means nothing to us because, like we just said, all of what you've known is gone. Right. We don't recognize that anymore. So here's your options: we'll take fifty thousand dollars U.S. payable on the spot, or you, comrade, get the hell out of my house. And they're sitting there with auto, fully automatic AK-47s. Yeah. So now what do you do? Or are you out in town and, you know, you just bought a nice new truck. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens with, you know, carjacking. Only this time it's done in broad daylight and they catch you coming out of, you know, the auto parts store. You know, you're where you're paying ten thousand dollars for uh, an oil filter <laughs> right because uh, you know because the money is because, you know, we everybody's <laughs> got to have a stimulus check and you know and yeah you knowing six thousand dollars extra a week for yeah. not working yeah that's where this is going yeah you know 27 trillion dollars in debt and i'm gonna go to the bank and you're gonna lecture me about a credit score you go to hell yeah, exactly <clears throat> that's yeah. right right how do you defend yourself against that? And I'm not just talking about with your fists. I'm not talking about with a firearm. What do you do when there's nobody there to protect you? Defund the police. Mm. What are you going to hire a lawyer? Well, we, we'd be glad to represent you, but uh, the problem with it is, is what court? Yeah, what court under what laws? Right. Society is, is no longer the same. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine trying to some, uh, sue somebody now in Portland? <laughs> I mean, think I, about this. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's a total, absolute nightmare. I mean, I was in the last time I was in Chicago. It's probably been eight years, probably a little bit longer than that. And where I was, I was actually down in the Aurora section, south about South Side of Chicago, I believe it was. I wouldn't have gone out there then, and it was relatively safe, yeah. as safe as Chicago could be. Right. You wouldn't go walking down the street now. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, not with not with full kit on. No. <laughs> yeah. So, Detroit. I have a friend of mine that was from. He's up from that area, and he was telling me. He said, you know, he was from the Flint area. He said there was places up there. He said they were bulldozing entire neighborhoods. People just left. Yeah. Uh, well, we have a student from up in the Detroit area, and he kind of tell you a little bit about that. Right. You know. You know, um, Los Angeles. Now, I will have, if I had to choose a major metropolitan area to, that I had to live in, God forbid, at one point in time in my life, that would have been it. I have a friend of mine when I was in graduate school, she lives out there, and she said there's entire streets in Los, what we knew as Los Angeles that are boarded up. Everybody left. Yeah. And that's basically been <clears throat> since the COVID-19 pandemic slash hoax slash issue slash you fill in the blank. Yeah. You know, if you know, we we need to come up with a prize for somebody who actually uh, names this thing properly. Yeah. That we can identify it on the on, on the podcast now. <laughs> Not the coof anymore. I like the coof. I like the coof. <laughs> the coof. But the point of, of of that is, at this point, and it's like I've always said, you know, I mean, if you start using your hands and your feet and your guns, it, 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 you, you've done screwed up. The problem with it is now is who do you fight? Yeah, it could be anybody. How do you, how do you even know if you're in the fight? That's the problem with this because are we uh, when we're questioning narratives? Are we really going to believe that the entire city of Portland, the entire city of Seattle, uh, Chicago, there's still some good decent people lives there? Yes. How do you get out of that? I mean, would you? I mean, let's just say, take your company right now. If he comes to Glenn, I'm you've been a loyal employee. I'm gonna offer you a golden opportunity. I'm starting an engineering lab in Portland. That pass. Well, you ain't heard my offer yet. Don't matter. <laughs> Don't matter. Well, okay, and that's fair enough. That's fair enough. What I'm saying is, there's no amount. That's, that's just what I'm saying. <laughs> well, then, how do you 
Okay. As a community, survive. You've lived in Portland all your life, Seattle. I'm not picking on Portland. I'm just I'm just using them as an example right now because they're the ones in the news all the time. Well, if if that can't be sustained at some point, that's the the the, the craziness will collapse on itself. That's what they said in Mexico. Twenty years ago, uh, true. <laughs> you know, there's an, there's entire enclaves in, in, in places in Mexico of, of Mormons, and there's entire cities in some places of, of Mexico where it's, you know, they're Mexicans and they're they're just as white as you and I are. Yeah, they're Irish, Irish descendants. Yeah. You know, I think it was a Spanish American War that they actually. Were traitors, and they said, you know, just looked at Washington and said like that, and they they went and joined the Mexicans, and they stayed. Right. Uh, but you look over the past twenty years at how that country has descended into chaos, and there's no end in sight. So, yeah. are we on the doorstep of that? And now you look and you know you look uh, you want to talk about people that are between a rock and a hard place on defending themselves and their family. Yeah. Could you imagine being somebody that is an honest, hard-working citizen that lives in Warriors? Yeah. We're there. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if, you, if you're in the in, that, in, in these cities where they're just it's daily, it's just rioting and burning and tearing up. Eventually, there won't be anything left there to tear up. And then they're going to venture out to other areas. That's where I think you're going. To, that's when the spark's going to go off. Where there'll be, my opinion, my opinion, um, is that's where you're going. To, that's where I think the uh, the rubber's going to meet the road, and you're going to see heavy violence because there's when they start moving to the outskirts of town, uh, they're going to run into people that won't. They're not going to play their game, and at that point, now you now you're going to see true violence. Yeah, and that's and my opinion. Probably that's my opinion. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see. I don't want to see any of it. No, I think it's why can't everybody just get along? I mean, I don't want. I mean, even you know these Antifa and Bill. I don't want to see you people get hurt. None of you. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. No, there's no 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 reason for it. But if you look at the way this is going, we're headed for that that initial scenario I talked about in Russia. Yeah. Uh, how do you protect your family from that? I mean, I'm already a nervous wreck right now, and we're we've been insulated from this where we live. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. You know, we we've seen a few incidents in some of the the, the more metropolitan areas. Yeah, but, but not, even Charlotte and Raleigh now is uh, I, I I wouldn't make it a point to go there, but if I had to go there on a daily and like a, a day trip, yeah, I probably do my business to get out. I would not be afraid to go there. If right. you came to me and said, "Hey, we got a we got a gig in Detroit," no, <laughs> peace out. Yeah, you, you you go if you want, but uh, no, no, because like what I need to take with me, they won't let me allow it you on know, the plane. I, I'll go to Reynosa first, <laughs> and I never thought I'd live to see the day I said that, but at least there I know what I'm dealing with. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. You know, we've looked at and and, and this segues into travel security. If you look back over the what we talked. With, with our, our corporations and our civic groups and, and our, our, our groups that travel, I always focused on there. You know, you know we had folks what, going to China, uh, Mexico, mm -hmm. Europe, you know, okay. Uh, there are probably a few I'm missing. But what we would do is go in and, and do some deep dive research on, on health issues. Uh, crime, mm -hmm. you know, culture, you know, things you don't do. I mean, you know, you go some places and certain hand gestures or certain things you wear that we would think nothing about doing here every day. Yeah. We'll get your ass kicked over there. Right. Problem with it is now is, is there is here as far as the violence. And the problem that I, that I'm seeing that is really disconcerting, and, and and what I'm I'm still got a little bit of a bee in my bonnet about with the government, is 
the response to it. Yeah. It should have been nipped in the bud a long time ago. The problem with that is, is do you, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second. Does it make it worse? Because do you prove these folks that have those views, do you, have you now proven them to be correct? In if you mind. want to go conspiracy theory on me now, let's play with me. And yeah. well, for me, no. And the reason I say that is because the first you throw the first punch, all bets are off. And that's what they've done. They throw the first punch. Well, what provoked it? Well, the government wasn't there when they did it. What provoked it was what? a video of a guy making a really horrible decision during an arrest. Well, that was your first punch. There's your, well, okay. Well, you see how this logic goes. Yeah, but that wasn't the federal government. Okay, then why has it been allowed to foster all these years? Why has this why has this boil on the back of of the minority community? Let's just be fair about this. Okay. Why has this allowed why has this allowed to become such an issue now that it took one man being mistreated and and, and, and being abused and murdered? Now all of a sudden now our society's collapsing around us. So you can make an argument there, and, I, and I'm saying look at the problem from a 10,000-foot view from their, from their mm-hmm. side of the plane. This is why. It ain't just one punch. It's been 50,000 punches. Yeah, but it's normally not federal government doing it. It's local, local municipalities, it's local sheriff's department, local police departments. Oh, fun fact. The Ennis okay. Project. Okay. Guess who sits on the board of the Innocence Project? You're going to laugh your ass off at this. Don't know. Board of Directors. Janet Reno. (laughs) For real? Absolutely. (laughs) When you say Janet Reno, first thing I do is I go to Will Ferrell playing her on SNL. (laughs) I just about sprayed Mountain Dew all over my Mac. Oh, God. Now, this woman was responsible basically for for the end. And and I'll say it, you're responsible for it. Ruby Ridge. Waco. You know, I'll even throw in Oklahoma City there because that's they, that's really who they were pissed off at. And you're going to put this woman <laughs> on a board of directors on on <laughs> on, <laughs> on a on exonerations. Oh, oh my God, uh, folks! I don't know who's in charge of that organization, but you need to be drug tested. <laughs> they got the coof, man. It distorted no, uh, it yeah, distorted yeah. their mind, distorted the way their mind. Went. I was sitting there looking at. I'm like, because I was doing some research the other night. And I'm looking at them. It's like this. This has got to be a joke. No, it wasn't. <laughs> the, the, she's on the board of directors of, of one of the major organizations, United States of America, that seeks to exonerate people who literally have been in prison wrongfully. Right. This woman who basically was responsible for incinerating women and children in Waco, Texas. Right. Uh, if anybody does it out there that maybe does not familiar with what we're talking about, with Waco, uh, Go, just go look at There's a couple good documentaries. You can find them on YouTube. Uh, Branch Davidian, Waco, Texas. Was it 1990? 92 or 93. 92 or 93. David Koresh. Er, er, David Koresh, early 90s. And then the other was Ruby Ridge. Uh, that was a That's a very interesting story. Uh, again, I know there's a good doc, one or two good documentaries on uh, YouTube mm-hmm. for that. Go look up, just go up Ruby Ridge. Um, and look into these things, and, and, and that way you have a little better idea if you don't know what we're already talking about. But these are incidences where the federal government come in and there was some heavy duty violence, and a lot of people died. Right, and it uh, it shouldn't have happened. The point to that, though, where I'm, 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 my point on this is, is, is you're correct. You know, the, and I never thought I'd live to see the day that I'm, I'm taking up the federal government. The federal government, as we know it now, if I'm talking about your rank and file FBI agent, mm-hmm. uh, U.S. Marshal, DEA, whatever the case may be. Do they deserve the treatment they're getting right now? No, they no. don't. They do not. They're 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 derelict in their duties. You know, the idea that we're there to protect federal buildings that has nothing to do with this. The hell with the building. There's in the United States. There's something called sedition. Yeah. Is where you take actions or words that seek to overthrow the United States government as it stands. Well, 
hello mcfly look at what the, what these people are talking about you know yeah no borders no walls no usa at all now, yeah. i don't care what you think about the border i don't care what you think about the wall i don't care what you think about immigration but that last little sentence there's kind of a little bit of a there's there's I, i'm having a hard time folks get the gray area on that one yeah oh yeah that's what you're preaching you know does our government step in and in, in shoo shoo sometimes well i'd say probably ever six seconds would you rather live in china or would you rather live? Oh, oh, here's a good one. North Korea. That, that's a, that's a tropical paradise. So, what exactly is your end game here? Now, in Russia, what you had in the '90s, we had we saw seventy some odd years of, of, of living under under communism. Right. And I don't think anybody really under. I mean, you and I were raised to believe <clears throat> that that was just sheer evil. Probably was, but I mean, you got to think. I mean, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but think about kids that were born that were our same age. Mm -hmm. Did they look at us the same way? And then all of a sudden, the year 1989 and 90 rolls around, and everything you've ever known is gone. Yeah. That's happening to us now. Yeah. You know, and, and more specifically, it's not so much applying to my son because he's a little bit too young to understand that. Mm -hmm. Your kids, this could have a profound impact on because they they grew up right. having a little bit better understanding of what America, air fingers, croats, was. Yeah. Yeah. And now everything you've known politically. And and not just politically, but it's the whole, well, I, I have to say politically, the whole corona COVID thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, Think what you want. It's politically driven at this point. Is is there is there people getting sick? Sure, but people get sick of a lot of things. Uh oh, look out! And at this point, six months in, uh, or five or six months in, uh, it's everything that's being done to me that I see now. It's all political, and that's why I like the, the kick in the teeth with the whole Sturgis bikers this week. Mm. <laughs> they showed up and basically said, "We're going to do. We're living life the way life's meant to be lived." And they they just doing their thing, and I'm sure the media's gonna have a field day if a couple of people get sick, and or whatever. Well, you, I mean, statistically, you'd have to be an ignoramus to believe that there's not mm -hmm. somebody there that already has it. Absolutely. Okay. Probably has it, had it, passed it on. Yeah. Okay. Great. But we probably an idiot to think that in the last six months we haven't come in contact with somebody. I mean, I've, I've never been sick, never had a case. Nobody, nobody I know or around me has ever been well, sick. I, I know two people now. One of them I spoke to yesterday. He he actually had had it. Right, was he sick? No, so no, I mean, we we was um we were talking, and I said I hadn't seen you in a while. He said, "Well, I've been sick." What do you mean? He said, "Well, I had COVID nineteen." So I'm all of a sudden like, "Oh God," <laughs> you know, because honestly, you're starting to think like that. You know, I mean, you're thinking that this is like some, you know, the Ebola, super duper gonorrhea or something that's airborne. <laughs> airborne How the hell am I going to explain this? Right, <laughs> airborne gonorrhea. <laughs> You know, we were going to talk about conspiracy stuff, but now we're on airborne gonorrhea. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new one. We'll start it. Exactly. <laughs> you got the herpagonocephalades or something. I mean, I don't know. So he was telling me, I said, well, you know, I asked him, he's a Hispanic fellow. I said, well, and he, he's a very hard worker yeah. in his construction business. I said, well, how did, I, I said, what, if you don't mind me asking, I said, what was it like? He said, I said, I was down about six days. Uh, he said it, it basically he said it was like a very severe chest cold with me and he's a big dude yeah i mean i mean he'd make you look like you know that mic stand i mean he's just a big broad guy uh he says about six days he said seventh day he said i started feeling better he said day eight nine he said i was fine yeah and he didn't he didn't take it he said he took he took theraflu right um uh, i know another guy that's they don't know if he's going to make it. Uh, he's an auto mechanic. And uh, he, again, he's not as big as this guy, but he was not in bad shape at all. I mean, he worked seven days a week. Uh, felt like he had the flu, went to the hospital, and now he's, uh, his entire right side of his body's paralyzed. And he's on a ventilator. He's, he's 
a little bit younger than you and I are. He's he's in his early to mid forties. Uh, he have no, he don't know he had anything else going underneath. Well, but don't know. I mean, yeah. obviously, I, I mean, I know this is going to this is going to sound like a shithead thing to say, but I'm not going to see him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we know my thing. You know, my but, thing here, again. I'm not a doctor, not a scientist. But if this was the big death death sentence that that, that you know it, that some people would have you make out to believe. You wouldn't have a sickness that has a based on the numbers. Mm-hmm. It's like a ninety nine percent get better rate. I mean, come on, man, three hundred and thirty plus million people that we know of in this country, and I think I, thought, I looked today; it was right around one hundred sixty thousand people have died this year, mm-hmm. and those deaths have been attributed to COVID nineteen. Now. What did they actually pass away from? I don't know. Well, we brought this up before with my dad. You know, you it know. could have been, you know, it, it may have exasperated something that was underlying. Mm-hmm. Or it may have made things worse. Uh, if this individual, you know, and they, I don't know their history, I, I, and I'm making a lot of us, I'm not even going to make assumptions. I'm just, I don't, I'm just, I, in I'm all just, fairness, I don't know. This is just hypothetical, right? generic talk. But I do know that this particular Virus causes inflammation. Mm-hmm. You know, it could exasperate something that caused, you know, they're talking about because of that, you wind up some people getting some blood clots, things like that. People that, that, stroke. people that are susceptible to those things, mm-hmm. that they have certain conditions in their body. So what I'm saying is you've had, I forgot how many people, was it over 5 million people have been tested positive mm-hmm. in this country. Now, keep in mind, 5 million people, that's a huge number. But we have 330 plus million people in this country. Now, they, you know, we claim, oh, in March, February, March, you know, Trump failed everybody. He didn't block them. Dude, I, for, based on certain things that I hear and then just and, and hearing stories and, and actually talking to doctors, uh, friends that were seeing patients and were treating them for the flu back in November, December, but they never tested positive for the flu. I th- you know, and then you see other reports of things in the media, whether you believe it or not. I really think this was here October, November. Well, you know, honestly, and when we were all at the, sitting at the movies together, all sitting high, ha ha ha, everybody together. And I, it, 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 honestly, my take is, if if everybody lined up tomorrow, if they had a, an antibody test for everybody, and all 330 million people lined up tomorrow and took an antibody test. Upwards of seventy five percent. I would I would say the mass mm-hmm. majority of this country mm-hmm. has been in contact, or uh, we'll use I don't want to use the word infect. We we'll use the word infected because you've been in contact with it. It's it's it's, it's maybe been in you and had no either had no effect or minimal effect on you, or you know, it was it was back in December January and nobody had no clue what it had been. You just you went to the doctor. You didn't feel good and they you know, they gave you some medicines and sent you on your way. I mean, there's no medicine for the flu anyway, other than, you know, something to keep your fever down, things like that. So I don't even do that. I mean, literally, I mean, I've been asked, what if, if you thought you had COVID-19, what would you do? I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. Very simple. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. I want to go home and do what I usually do for the flu. I mean, because, you know, I, I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but you and I are better in better shape than most people our age. Right. Yeah. I run five miles a day. I, I yep. work out. I'm going to go home, take a hot shower, and go to bed and ride it out just like I do everything else. Yep. Uh, two things on this. No, first, my buddy Hector. You know, God bless your brother. I hope you get better. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I he, don't know you, but he's you know, a, he's good a, luck. I mean, you know, he's one of those people who came to this country looking for a better life. I mean, just a, a just salt of the earth guy. So God bless your brother. I hope you get better. Uh, good, good, good man. Uh, but what I'm scared of going back to this, what happens if, you know, we're talking Mad Max today. Yeah. What's really concerning me about what you brought up with this, with this sickness or whatever it is, it's almost like it's turning into a social stigma. Oh yeah. Now that's, that's, that's folks, that's dangerous. Our little local Greek place we like to eat at. I was having lunch there this past week, and I'm sitting in there, and somebody in the back corner was uh, 
was sneezing. The back corner phased me one bit. But there was some people at the table across over there. They were losing their shit. Oh, my God. Oh my, we need to leave. We need to leave. Really? So I've seen your stigma firsthand. Right. I mean, you know, and I've kind of got a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of training in stigma because it got in my entire doctoral dissertation. <laughs> you know, if you want to read what stigma, read anything by Irving Goffman. Now he's it's very very dated material, but it, you know, stigma, stigma, stigma. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look at uh, labels. You know, felon. Well, I lived with that one for a while, and yeah. trust me, it ain't fun. Right. Because, you know, even though in the big scheme of things, it really didn't impact my life that much. I, I, I still had a great job that paid well, you know, owned my own business. Uh, family, kids. Family, you know. I mean, in the big scheme of things, you know, but it was something that, you know, I didn't bring up at cocktail parties. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know. It didn't I, change who you were. It didn't change. No, I mean, well, it, it did. It was It was a stain. I mean, as far as who you are as but, a person. But, but people that knew me? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, I mean, if it was a big deal, I don't think you'd let me in your house. No. Right? I mean, you take me, me Lee, Tom, right. you know, all, 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 all you know, the old, old, old crew there. Right. You know? I mean, it, you know, <laughs> it, it was okay. It. It, was, it, was, it was a shitty time. You got through it. Yeah. But with this, when they're starting to talk about, you know, contact tracing, uh, you know, certificates of what immunity with that idiot Fauci. Oh my God. Okay. Ugh. Where does that stop? It doesn't. Where does that stop? I mean, do we, I mean, do we, are we going to go back now and say, okay, anybody over the age of, of 75, you have to have a certificate of immunity for polio. Uh, yeah. our age. Yeah. We're 47. When's the last, how many people have you ever known has had the measles? I had them when I was a kid. I had measles, mumps, chicken pox, all that stuff. When I've I was, never had when any I, of it. When I was a little kid. I've never had the chicken pox. And I never, and, and then I've never had them. See, you know, I've been around, I, through my life, I was around many people that had them. Mm -hmm. I never got them again. But but you look at that, I mean, you look at the measles, uh, yeah. smallpox. <clears throat> I mean, you want to talk something out of white people out. Yeah. How do you protect yourself from that? I mean, I'm not, no, I know how to protect myself from the, from the coof, <laughs> you know, it's a very one of the one of the key things to keep from getting sick. You know, very some. I, I'm I'm gonna step out of ledge, give some medical advice. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. We're well, close. Wash your ass. Yeah. Cleanliness. Right. <laughs> Hygiene. You know, I take two showers a day. I do too. Uh. In the f what four plus years we've been together, in business. Mm-hmm. I've missed one night of training. Right. And that night, my I was so sick, my son came home and turned the living room light on, and I thought somebody hit me in the face with a claw hammer. Right. Two days. Did I go to the doctor? No. The doctor is for emergencies. That's you right. break a bone, you go to the doctor. That's right. You know, if you're projectile vomiting and, 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 and diarrhea at the same time, you go to the doctor. Right. You know, you don't go to the doctor for a toothache. You know, you don't go to the doctor for a hangnail. That's not what that that's that's just all you're doing is, is, is abusing services that people that people that truly need them. That's right. Are not able to use them for. That's right. So, my opinion now, I'm I'm going to go down a hole here on two things. You mentioned something about, you know, how do the, some people that have been accused of being full of shit, but they, for some reason, they keep being right. Right. Well, they're never vindicated. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to step out on a limb here and say, I'm, I'm going to say the name, Alex Jones. Right. Okay. Let's look at this. Now, you, now all the gay frogs and stuff, now, I'm not, yeah, I'm not about to step in that minefield because, honestly, I don't even know what the man's talking about, nor do I care. Right. Okay, but let's think about this. Stuff he was talking about two, three, four years ago, well, it's here. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? 
Now, honestly, I want you to stop and think about that. Yeah. How do you explain that, that almost, now, the timing may be off. Right. He was talking about Civil War, what, now, I think you've listened. Quite a few years ago. Well, have you watched the news in the last couple weeks? Yeah. Okay. Out of control, civil unrest. Right. Uh, I've gone back and done some research on him. He was talking about that stuff 20 years ago. Yeah. The things, the problems we're, ha- we're having, you know, with the alleged the alleged problems with the United Nations. He's talking about that 20, 20 years ago. Right. Now, yes, his his delivery. Uh, Man, it's like that, you know, it, it, this is a, it, that Epstein fella. Right. Well, he was talking about that 10 years ago. Okay. And I, and, I, and honestly, I don't follow, I, I follow him, you know, if I've got nothing better to listen to, I might download it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got a certain playlist on my podcast, and if I'm kind of deficient that day, I might listen to it. But, but there's a, you know, there's a, besides him, there's a small handful of people over the last 10, 15, 20 years mm-hmm. that would speak out on things of that nature. People call them kooks, crazy, and all that. G. Gordon Liddy. Yeah. And, 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 with, and with 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 Alex Jones again, like you say, his delivery is what I think turns a lot of people like this guy's out of his damn mind. Well, but, the medium is the message. I mean, how many how many times have you heard that? I mean, yeah. But I mean, if you if you went and bought if I saw I said this is the best beer in the world, and that's in a white can says beer on it. Mm-hmm. Remember that when we as kids? Yeah. How many people today do you think would buy that? Well, if a YouTube influencer did it, somebody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. If if somebody ahead of the crowd did it, then but but uh, going to the store and picking this one, this one, or this one, they'll avoid that one. Right. Yeah. You know because of because of the delivery. Right. Well, that that's not visually appealing to me, so I'll go buy this one over here, and it's the same thing. Yeah. But what's he doing? I mean. I've never found any... I mean, there's things you and I don't agree on. It don't mean we hate each other. Right. You know, there's... there's That's just... Be, it's called being a, a decent human being. Right. Having your own train right. of thought. Your right. Own, your own mind. And, and by listening to things, you grow from that. Well, maybe I didn't think about this right. right. Or, well, it just reinforces that he's a jackass. That's There's just one of those two things going to come together. What he's talking about now, though... Is something I'm not going to lie to you. It scares the bejesus out of me. Because I was listening to it today. Is the possibility of us ascending into that chaos like Russia. Uh, pick one of those countries. Of what happens in the event that this election goes sideways. Uh, his contention is... If Trump wins, right? Well, they're going to contest the election, and all these blue states. Mainly, what he's saying is, the West Coast is going to secede. <coughs> That's going to be interesting. Now, here's my question. Now, let's go to uh, call your bookie on this. How many people are willing to call this man a crackpot if we wake up on now? When's the election? The second, November, third, November third, I believe. Third. Yeah. Well, let's just. November 6th. If November 6th, we look out the window and there's roving hordes going through the, through the countrysides. <laughs> now, at some point, you got to stop calling this man a kook. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. You've got to stop that, people. Yeah. You know, because then we've crossed that line into what you and I saw in high school of, of it, what was going on in Russia. Right. You know what people like my grandparents and and my uh, some of my aunts and uncles saw, like in Weimar Germany, where it took a wheelbarrow full of cash to, to you know to buy a bag of coffee. Right. We're there. Yeah, with the yeah with the way you know with the civil unrest, with the whole god nonsense craziness with the whole COVID nineteen shutdowns lockdowns. What the hell ever you want to call them, and then you take what you said at the beginning of this uh, early on was about you know sending all this new money out to everybody so they don't have to go to work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, eventually something something's going to break. 
and it's 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 like driving down the road, you know, and all four tires blow at the same time, and you're running about ninety mile an hour. Oh yeah, you and you're throw, on, you throw that in my face, didn't you? And you're on the Pacific Coast Highway, <laughs> and it, it, you know, yeah, you're going off the cliff. That's question is then as professionals, right? Because honestly, we're going to have clients that okay, and I'll guarantee you, somebody's going to ask us about this. What do we do? Well, we got people that pay us large sums of money to to, to not say, oh, Luke. Yeah. I'm hearing this. Now, this is, this, this, and again, I'm not a financial expert, mm -hmm. but I'm also not stupid. Right. I've heard these people say, you know, get out of debt. Well, wait a cotton picking minute. Now, let's just, now I want you to hear me out on this. Oh, boy. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> now, you're going to sit here and counsel somebody. You're not, our job mm -hmm. is to teach people things to protect themselves. Right. You know, that would be like, okay, what, what we want to do is, is okay, if, let's just assume all this goes down. The first thing we're going to tell these people is go out and buy a tennis racket. You know, to swat the bullets back. Huh. Now, that's some sage advice. Right. Okay. So here's what I'm hearing because I am I, I follow the silver market. Okay. Cryptos. Right. Yeah. If governments go belly up, you know, and then that's what crypto's for. Right. Yeah, I have a friend of mine that got into got into Bitcoin when it was at a hundred dollars. I ain't seen him in a year and a half. Yeah, I had a friend that yeah. got involved in it. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's and, and and trust me, this guy was not a ladies' man. You know, I imagine he's probably bought his way into that lifestyle by now. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I went by the house and there was nothing in the house anymore. Yeah, he was an attorney. Get out of debt. Okay, now now now, I'm no, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, Glenn. I've I've got a little bit of education under my belt, but explain to me why I would go spend what money I've got. Right. You're looking at the financial system. It's not even on fire anymore. I mean, it's in smolders. Yeah. But I'm going to take what money I've got and go pay off my debt. So in eight months when they go bankrupt, now we're both broke. Right. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, that's right. You know, pay your credit card off. Okay, well, I've got one credit card. So let's just say that it was from, uh, you know, the Bank of Wahoo. Okay. Good bank. Great bank, yeah. <laughs> so let's just say that I owe the Bank of Wahoo $4,000 on my credit card bill. Okay. Oh, God, everything's getting ready to crash. I'm going to go pay off my, my balance. And then the minute I do, they go belly up. Right. Exactly how does that benefit me? Well, I'm not in debt anymore. But y'all are broke. Yeah, well, they were not, they're not in business anymore either, so the way I see it, they just canceled each other out. Right. This student loan mess, you mark my words, this is going to be bad. Now, yes, I, I'm, I'm paying my student loans back. But I think they said it was like 2 or $3 trillion that's outstanding on student loans. Yeah. That people not even paying on. Okay. Sooner or later, you're not able to ignore the interest on that. That that money's got to start coming in at some point. That would be like you renting out a house and telling the guy, yeah, go ahead and live there for 20 years. Yeah. No rent. And, but on the 21st year, buddy, you got to start paying up. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, what kind of business sense does that make? Uh, zero. So that leads you to believe that either, A, this, this was – not even real to begin with. You know, you know, Scripture teaches us that debt, you know, that debt is slavery. It is. That, right? It, it absolutely and is. And it is. That's correct. But then you got somebody coming behind us in our government now saying, we're, we're just going to wipe the slate clean. Well, where's the money go? Yeah. Okay, you're, you're printing all this money right now to give to people. And I'm saying give it to them. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you're going to come back next year 
let's just play along. Let's just assume that the the more left side of our country wins, and they come in and just take this big giant eraser on the chalkboard and say, just start wiping it clean. Right. Well, you have to assume one of two things then. Either it was never real to begin with, or they've just taken the balance sheets of all these financial institutions and just wadded it up. And wiped their butt with them. And, and wiped their ass with it. <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, so now who 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 owes this money? <clears throat> right. Now, how do you protect yourself from that? It'll shit roll. Shit rolls downhill. Basically, they'll, they'll raise taxes to, to make make more out of us to, to recoup for it. And that's exactly where these twelve hundred dollar checks are going. Oh, yep. <clears throat> you know, everybody thinks this is free. Oh no 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 no, no, no. free. No. No no no. Because there's I, nothing f- truly free in this country. If you've ever, if you if you've not paid attention, that mm-hmm. well, why are prices getting so much higher? Well, it's because your money's let worth less. Right. So now when you go to Taco Bell, it's thirteen bucks. Right. I went to buy something for my truck the other day at an auto parts store. Uh huh. The battery that I bought for my truck was a hundred dollars higher than the one I last bought. Yeah. Now you think about that. Well, I got one for you. My DJ stuff. I bought a case that I keep all my equi- my gear and equipment in. I want to buy a second one, identical, exact same piece of equipment. Double, co- completely doubled in price in eight years. Doubled. Mm-hmm. Not went up twenty, thirty, forty, fifty percent. It doubled. Same exact piece of equipment. Not a single thing's different on it. So I restate the question. <clears throat> Two questions. How do you protect? I mean, show me the, the the purpose. I don't even know who your mortgage is through, but let's just say that the whole system just goes <laughs> real scientific term. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who do you owe the money to? Has anybody actually <laughs> stopped to ask this question? Mm. Your truck. Right. Uh, it's none of my business who you financed it through. Right. Well, knowing him, he paid for it out of cash. But uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> who do you owe the money to? Right. My question is, unless somebody comes up and, and claims the, respons- the, the responsibility of that bank, I don't owe to buy shit. Okay, then how many more people are out there walking around out here in this country like you and I who've got these same questions, coupled with some of these left, left le- left-leaning politicians that say, well, we're just going to wipe it clean. Mm. this may not be such a bad I mean yeah the crash is going to hurt a little bit but in the long run I mean is it just a giant reset where you and I come in as, as, as protection experts and consultants how do you teach people to protect themselves to get from point A to point B because that little stretch of land in there uh, the wild west exactly because you're going to have Portland 6.0. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to be contained there. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's a conversation I had with this guy the other day. He said, I can't understand why they're attacking some of the people they're attacking. I said, that's where you don't understand this. They don't care who you are. They care what you are. Yeah. You know, you take a seat, some of the CEOs we work with. Millionaires. Yeah. Well, are they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And then some. Okay. Now, out of some of the people we've met, how many probably would disagree with about half of our political views? Probably most of them. Most of them. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, the McCloskeys. Yeah. Okay. From what, everything I'm reading, they were pretty much left-leaning folks. That correct. Well, they're getting spit-roasted now. They've been cannibalized by right, their own group. By their own group. Yeah. So it, it's not of 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 who you are. You know, you could be, you know, you know Joe Sphincter, and you're the you're the biggest left leaning. You know, I, I support it. You, you you give me a left leaning cause, I'll support it. Right. But you live in a ten million dollar house. Mm-hmm. That's what they're after. Right. So when all this started. Where I look at this as a, as a, you know, as somebody that's involved in this professionally, meaning we get paid for this, this is the golden age of security. I was talking to a guy today. Yeah. 
He told me, he said, I've got more work than I can do in eight months. He said, I, can't, he said, I cannot hire people fast enough to work for me. Right. And this is in North Carolina. Could you imagine what it's like in Portland and San Francisco, L.A.? Yeah. Yeah. It's chaos. You know, so <clears throat> for all of you out there that are teaching martial arts, self-defense, self-protection, security, travel security, oh, God. The first thing you know, yeah, I need uh, I need some help on going to uh, Detroit. Okay, don't go. That'll be twelve hundred dollars, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, because I mean, it it you got to you know the first the first question I want to ask is, is this something that requires your presence? You know, we got these wonderful things now called you know it's called the internet where you can actually see another person. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Not to mention the fact of I've now, you know, we've got resources to get a client there without, you know, going through the TSA problem. Right. <clears throat> but now you go back in some places, You the minute you get on an airplane, you come back to some places, it's a 14-day quarantine. Yeah. Now, if the guy owns the company, I imagine he he, he make his own rules. Right. You got to worry about that. Yeah. You know, where are you going to put the, where are you going to, you know, when we're making a travel plan, where's this guy, where's this, this man or woman going to stay? You know, if we're looking at the city center, well, that's a problem. Yeah. Because that's where these, you know, a lot of these groups are deciding, hey, you know, let's go torch that. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I, I can't imagine many of our clients is going to want to stay, you know, at the Red Roof Inn. That's correct. Okay, so, and then you got a, an issue of, you want to talk about a nightmare of when we're discussing, you know, here's how we're going to get to and from the venue. Yeah. When this situation is fluid and it's changing, we used to say, okay, there's a couple of weeks ago there was a couple of armed robberies here. And now we're looking at, well, eight minutes ago they just burned a police car. How do you plan for that? Right. You know, you guys can see the quandary we've got here with, with the, the 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 path that things are going, the 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 the, the rolling lava <laughs> that's coming down the hill, and uh, what was the Pompeii? Yeah. But you remember, <laughs> you know, it's gonna burn it burn over everything. You remember the look I got a couple years ago when I told somebody he asked, well, "What's a dummy bag?" Yeah. Yes. Okay, for what that is, is if you're in a very hostile environment in a hotel. I even taught people, you know, how to pack their bags. Yeah. You know, left to right. Okay, and that's that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. But the dummy bag was you get everything you need, your important documents, medication, uh, you know, toiletries, you know, like a toothbrush, toothpaste, and, and one change of clothes, put it in a small bag, and tie it to your right leg before you went to sleep. Well, why on earth would you do that? Because if we got to get out of here, I'm knocking on the door three times. The fourth one's going to be my foot coming through it saying, we got to go. Yep, you ain't going to have time to search around the dark for right. your stuff. Yeah, we, sir, we got to go. Yep. Yep. Now, some of the places that we have people going, how often have we come back and heard horror stories of that very thing happening? Mm-hmm. That's correct. That's not. It's not Mexico or China anymore. That's that's Chicago. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Three o'clock in the morning when there's a you know, fifteen people shot out there in the street, front right? And bullets is flying and everything, right? Yeah. You yeah. know. So, what do you do when all when all of a sudden you come home and there's, there's those guys sitting in your house and well, this is our house now, and you can say it can't happen here. I disagree. It happened to other places. Right. Mm. Food for thought. I mean, it. Uh, this, again, Ministry of Defense. Our goal is to talk about things that obviously relate to martial arts, self defense, self protection, but to make you think about the world around you. How this is affecting you, because ultimately what's going on around you is going to affect your safety, well-being of you and your family. Mm -hmm. And that's why we bring these type of topics up. So we got a mess on our hands. And I hope I hope that people 
with common sense, the average Joe Schmo can, you know, when they, they, they see this stuff going on and they see the people that are allowing this stuff to happen, that, you know, they remember that when it comes time to get them people out of the position to be making those decisions, to allow it to happen. You know, my but, thought, that's, but, oh, because God. It, because, it too, it calls, because at some point, it becomes beyond anybody's control, and it's just complete chaos. I that's what it, that, and that's and that leads to the scenario you're talking about, where you come to the house and there's two other people sitting there squatting and say, "Well, yeah, now you got to go." Yeah. So, you go. People have to wake up, take notice, and pay attention to what's going on. You Use know, comments. About situational awareness. Right? Oh, mm. well, if I am, well, yeah, that situational awareness. Mm. The situation sucks, and you better be aware of it. <laughs> that's, about, that's about as plain and simple as we can say. Yeah, it. yeah I'm aware there's a situation now. You know, now what, Kimasabi? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. So, anyway, uh, again, food for thought. Hopefully, it jarred something that you can think about. Um, look into things. Go out and look. Don't don't take for granted what people say to you. Go out and look it up for your, on your own. Uh, learn things, learn some skills. We've we've talked about preparedness. We've talked about skill sets. We've talked. Uh, just go back to some of our previous podcasts, and all the things that we talk about kind of lead up to how how are you prepared to deal with a very bad situation? You know, this sort of you know when it, when when if things were to go completely sideways, go south. You know, you know economically, you know, just everything goes crazy. You know. There's no great answer for it. I don't think there's a perfect answer, but you you can take steps to, to try to prepare yourself and your family to hopefully, if something ever, if it ever, God forbid, ever got to that point, that you could you could function and you you can keep carrying on and you you kind of have a next move. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, man, you, it's crazy. Well, you know, there's security measures. You know, we just got a new black dog. When yeah. he gets a little bit older, I'm going to take him to the groomer and I'm going to have him dye a white stripe down his back. <laughs> <laughs> now, be a, be, a, be a big skunk. Now, who's going to break in my house? <laughs> I'm going to do my, my retriever that way. Oh, geez. <laughs> What's about a 100 pound dog? <laughs> Roughly. Now, I, 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 I'd give a month's pay to see that or put it in your truck. I'd probably get kicked kicked out of the house but <laughs> then at the mama's baby <laughs> but uh, but anyway um i'll put a porcupine on a leash and that'd be cool now this is totally off topic there's a video i, I read it was clickbait clickbait got off on a, on a tangent sylvester stallone and i think he was visiting schwarzenegger's house so he's in the driveway and there's a damn alligator walking through the, he's standing walk, walking through the yard. Then there's a porcupine walking around the front yard. Mm-hmm. And then there's another video when you go to Schwarzenegger's house. He's got like a donkey and a miniature horse. That's his. That's his house pets. <laughs> yeah, the reason the porcupine came up, I was thinking about my instructor the other night. He's, he, he, there's a lady he absolutely despised. He's called called her porcupine. He's, why do you call me that? And so at least the porcupine, the pricks are sticking out of it. <laughs> He said it to her uh, face. <laughs> uh. Anyway, with that said, again, food for thought. You guys uh, think on this stuff. Please comment. Join the conversation. Uh, give us your thoughts on it. You, know, you may have information that's good for us. Share with us. You know, we, 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 we'll take it. We'll, we'll, whether good or bad, we take all the information, and then we'll, we'll cipher it for ourselves. Especially if you've been to these areas. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you, that's, that's, for God's sake, share that with people. You know, we had a, we had a guest uh a few weeks ago in our podcast, uh, Lee Smith, one of our one of our guys, and he's a pilot, and he goes all over the place, and we he's a wealth of information. Uh, not that we would bring some of the things up here, but he has a wealth of information of things that he can feed back to us when he goes to specific locations and deals with specific situations. So it's good we we take information from everybody. It's good for everybody to share, talk, get a full understanding of everything, learn. But uh, anyway, with that said, you got anything else? I'm going to try to sneak into Cuba. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> He's the only one on the raft going towards Haiti. <laughs> you, I want you, I want you. 
put that in your mental image. <laughs> You've got like six rafts coming this way made out of old Chevy pickup truck bids. <laughs> Here I am in a kayak. Maybe <laughs> I could Photoshop something like oh, that. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Anyway. So look, until next time, <laughs> we, we got to get out of here. It's time to eat. Uh, you guys, until next time, uh, be sure to cl- you know, click the, the like, subscribe, notification bell. Uh, drop us a line. Drop us an email. Uh, talk to us. Uh, comment in the, the section below. And uh, until next week, you guys, be safe. See you all. <laughs> it's crazy.